Today we're going to learn Yuvamot Ha'ayin Zayin. Today's stuff is sponsored by Aviva Adler in loving memory of her father, Professor Joseph Kahana's sixth year at Zayin. Liloi Nishmat Yosef Ben Rachel Vitzvi HaKohen. Zichrono Lebracha. Okay, we're going to get started with, um, we're in the middle of our big story of David HaMelech, right? He's about to go and attack Goliath, be the hero. And Sha'ul HaMelech starts to get a little bit worried about who is this, who is this guy and he's going to take over the kingdom. To which Doeg Adomi says, oh, don't worry, I have a solution, right? Why are you worrying about him taking over? I can knock him out entirely because of his lineage. By the way, I noticed, I don't know why I didn't think of this yesterday, but I noticed this morning, Doeg Adomi is an Edomite, right? Notice he's called an Edomi. He's also got problems with his lineage, right? A, a Ger Edomi also, I mean, we don't know exactly where he was, you know, what his lineage was, but clearly He's kind of on the attack. This is often, right? The downtrodden often then, you know, to make themselves feel better, they'll go against someone else. And maybe that's a little bit, um, at least some reference here to this issue of, you know, he, why, why is Doeke Adomi the one attacking him? I mean, the other reason why the rabbis bring in Doeke Adomi is the real reason, or I don't know, the real reason, the more obvious reason. I think there's another underhanded thing, which is this Edomi. He's an Edomite. And we're going to get to someone who's called the Ishmaeli. There's clearly a lot of issues of other nations coming in here and people who are Jews but have lineage from some other nation. But the other thing is, Doeg was the one who basically, when, when no, I kind of made a little reference to it yesterday, but when the Nov, the city of the, of the Kohanim, protected David, and then Doeg basically told on them. And then, um, and then he basically went out, right? He told Shaul that they had helped David, and that he goes out in cruel, like in a very cruel manner, kills the whole city. And He's clearly an anti-David character. So if there's going to be someone who's going to go up against David, you know, it makes sense it was him. But I think that there's another element here of him being an Edomite who's also got some issues. Um, okay, so now we're in the middle of this story. We move from the battlefield. Shaul says at the end of yesterday's stuff, take, right, take the, you know, this menu. We can't discuss this right here on the battlefield. Go take it to the Beit Midrash and go figure out what the story is. So they get to the Beit Midrash. And they say, that was the end of yesterday's stuff. They rule. This is the story. He's totally fine. But Doeg is not happy with that. Actually, who Doeg Kohani Kushiata, he basically asks all the same questions that he asked in yesterday's stuff of, of Avner. And he says, what about Mamzer? You're going to say Mamzer, below Mamzer, you know, that's not true. To which they answered, Mumzal. No, that's not defining the person. It's defining what, it, what, it, what they have on the person. They each have a blemish. That would apply to men and women. Then he says, what about, um, what about the fact that that referred to everybody, to which they said, no, 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 right? right? Women don't generally go out, but right? it was men that should have done it. Not the women. Again, they're excluded. Comes to and he says, what are we talking about? The men should have gone to the men and the women should have gone to the women. So he asks the exact same questions and what's their response? The exact same thing as Avner. Ishtiku, they were silent. Didn't know what to say. So in that case, it seems like Doeg won the battle. They wanted to now go and say, listen, David, you can't be part of, you, know, you can't marry within our people. Now it's not like David was going to get married, but I guess, you know, this is a way of pulling him down from his, you know, where he was heading. Miyad, you know, it's a little bit weird. Immediately, and we're about to hear what happens immediately, but in order to get to what happens immediately, we have to bring a contradiction between two psukim. And from that contradiction, we're going to get to our, what happened. So stop for a minute. Amasan ben ish ushmo yitra ha Yisraeli asher ba'al Abigail bat nachash. Okay, Abigail bat nachash, nachash is a reference to Yishai. Abigail was David's brother, uh, sister, and she married this guy, Yitra Yisraeli, and they had a child, Amasa. We're now jumping an entire book. We were in, um, in, uh, in Shmuel Aleph, chapter 17. We're now, if you jump ahead, we're now in Shmuel Bet, chapter 17. And it talks about Amasa, who's the son of Yitra Yisraeli, who was married to Abigail. Uktiv, in a different place in Debrei Yamin, when it gives the lineage, it says, Yeter Hayishmaeli. So one place is called a Yisraeli and one place is called a Yishmaeli. Why the difference in names? Amarava melamed shechagal charbo ki Yishmael ba'amal. Kol mi she'eno shomea alacha zo yidakir b'chechet. Why is he called a Yishmaeli? Not because he actually came from Yishmael. He wasn't descended from Yishmael, but because he took a sword like Yishmael. Okay, many of them are fresh to say, 
what sword did Yishmael have and what are we talking about? But okay, let's put that aside. Some people say it's actually Yishmael who killed Gedalia. It's not Yishmael, the son of Abraham, but the one who assassinated Gedalia. Maybe that anyway does point, even though that happened after the story, obviously. But the point is he got up there with a sword, you know, in, in the eyes of the Midrash also. Yishmael was a bad guy, so he could be bad in the sense he must have carried swords with him, even if we don't have reference to it. Ve'amal. Why, why did he pick up a sword? Well, he said, if you don't keep this halacha, I'm going to kill you. Okay, basically, like at some point. I have a tradition from the Beitin of Shmuel, the Navi Shmuel. I have a tradition, don't do anything to David because I have a tradition that all is good. Okay, so now a few things. First of all, what's interesting, right? We were on the battlefield with David and Goliath. Shaul says, take this to the Beit Midrash. Okay, like we, we can no longer handle this on the battlefield. We need more experts. We go to the Beit Midrash and what do we find in the Beit Midrash? A battlefield, right? So there's this story going, there's the, the fight there, but this becomes, you normally think of a Beit Midrash as a peaceful place and there's no swords in the Beit Midrash, but somehow the swords of the battlefield come into the Beit Midrash and we have this visual of a real fight ensuing in the Beit Midrash. Just, just an interesting image to see, right? Where you wouldn't, you know, we've seen their sources talk about, you know, Milcham Tashel Torah and the, the fight over Torah. So they're clearly referencing the battlefield and saying basically the Beit Midrash became a battlefield. Now, there's a bit of an issue with this story. The Gemara says, Umi Mahema, can he be believed? Now, first of all, you have to remember, Yetel is related to David, he's his brother in law. So he's what we call Nogea Badava, right? He's, he's one of the parties. And not even, even if you didn't look at it like that, still we have this issue, which is, okay, we're going to have a rule. If somebody comes and says, listen, I have a tradition of so-and-so and so-and-so, you know, such and such. If his tradition was before the actual thing happened, okay? Then, in other words, randomly in the Beit Midrash, I talk about some Masoreth and I have a tradition, yeah, they'll accept it. But in love, if it's not before the Maaseh, we're in the middle of this heated battle and somebody comes and says, I have a tradition to prove it. Who knows if they're lying, right? They're just trying to prove their point and saying, I have a tradition. Anyone can have a tradition, right? There's no way to prove it. So we don't believe them when they're in the middle of, right, in the middle of a fight. So how do we explain that they accepted this? So what did he say, right? So again, even if he wasn't because, right, partial because of his brother-in-law, still he's partial because of the argument. He's in the middle of arguing and then he pulls out, oh, I have a tradition. It's like an easy way. Anyone could just say that, right? We all go by traditions. Anyone could just pull it out of their sleeve and then what, we're going to believe everybody who says that. So they say, no, here we believe him. Why? Okay, there, the Beit was still around, which means that if he was lying about it, then they, they would find out. This is what they call milta da avide li galoye, something that will become clear in the future. Because it will become clear further down the road, we believe him now. Okay, so that resolves that issue. Mikoma kom kashya. But what it doesn't resolve is this difficulty that Doeg had, which is, what about the women? Why didn't the women go out to greet the women? And if they should have, then we should penalize them as well. Before we even go on, I have to point out one thing. This thing about lokid mo'etcham elechem u'bamayim, okay? The rest of that pasuk is, okay, that they didn't give you bread and water when? When you got out of Egypt. And asher sachar alecha et bil'am ben be'or mipto aram naharayim lekalalecha. And they hired bil'am to curse you. Now, this pasuk is a little confusing because it was the amonim who lokid mubalechem ubamayim, and it was the Moavim who hired Bilam. So they were each punished for a different reason. So this whole argument is really only for the Amonim, because the Moavim were the ones who hired Bilam. Clearly, in those days, women weren't involved in politics, and it certainly wasn't the women who did that. So when it comes to the Moavim, we actually don't have such a question. It's really a question on the Amon Amoniot, okay, because they were the ones who should have brought bread and water. So just to point out, Commentaries point, point out this, the Yushami actually discusses it, that, that there's a difference between Amon and Moab, right? We kind of lump them together here, but there actually is a difference. The reasons each one relates to a different nation. 
So now they say, Hacha Tirgumu, here, okay, in, in Babylonia, we explain, Kok Fuda Bamelech Pnima. Okay, most people say this person, Kok Fuda, it's actually Kok Fuda. Okay, which if you want to understand a better explanation of it, um, Shirin Chamutal this week in Daphne Mishalahan actually translated as luggage, like your Fuda is your luggage. And they have a whole interesting explanation. You can listen, but and their whole uh, thing is on this topic, which is a very famous pasuk because the pasuk is used in general to talk about the tzniut of women and how kol fuda melech pnima. There's, you know, many people take this to say, oh, women belong in the house, and the Ramam quotes it. And the Ramam has a, a very extreme position about women, having been um, in Muslim Spain, and you know, talks about women should barely go out of the house only once or twice a month to visit a Beit Avel or to you know, something a bit extreme. Um, in any case, what they're pointing out here is the women weren't necessarily, in, they weren't supposed to be leaving their houses even to go to the women, right? Or maybe the Jewish women weren't around prancing about to have been greeted by the women, okay? So that's one concept, okay? This concept of women should be out of the house, right? Has obviously changed over the generations. And while there might be some people who think that, you know, this might still apply in certain ways, right? Certainly modernity has changed this very much. So um, that's just to put it into perspective. Again, there's more about that on Shion uh, Kabutal's blog. You can listen if your Hebrew is good enough. Um, okay, so now that's one option. That's what they say in Babel. They basically say, you can't blame the women for not going out because women don't generally go out. It's just, you know, it's kind of describing the reality. Next, the Marava Amre, right? And some people might say women shouldn't go out, right? They might even take it even farther to say, right, women belong in the house. They shouldn't go out, right? Obviously, um, right, that's not my, uh, my belief in, in the world. Um, Amri. In Israel, they say, or maybe Rabbi Yitzchak said it, Amar Kra, the Pasuk says, it's very similar, but a little bit different proof. When the, when the um, Malachim came to Avraham, they say, where is Sarah? Why not? She was in the, right? And where was she? She was in the Ohel. There you see, the women generally were in the Ohel. Okay, they were in the tent. By the way, Kol Kudav Malachim is a Pasuk from Tehilim. Okay, and again, you can look at the context there. It's, it's not exactly a... The, the simple reading is not the way it's generally meant to be, that, that it has been taken to be read. Uh, um, anyway, Sarah was in the Oa. What's different about that? Well, in the end, she comes out of the Oa, right? So that's also just an interesting proof. It's a little bit different. Okay, so now we have finished our conversation. We have Doega and Domi's questions. We come up with some answers why the women weren't necessarily, weren't expected to have gone out and therefore they weren't punished. And therefore any converts from Amon and Moab are accepted if they're women, not if they're men, obviously, because that's the, the, the Pasuk. Doeg wanted to disagree with this, but David in the end is saved. Now we're going to say Kitanat. What's the reason why we basically exclude the Ammonite women and the Moabia women from this um, prohibition of marrying within you know, the regular Jewish community? So it's a Machloket Tanaim as to why. Not it's a Machloket Tanaim as to what, but it's a Machloket, whether it is forbidden or not, Everyone agrees, nobody really ends up going with Doeg's approach, but it's a matter of where we get it from. Amoni velo Amoni, Moabi velo Moabi, Devrei or Yehuda. So he basically, right, until now we kind of merged it all together, but now we're going to say one option is to say that it's just, right, we darshan the, the wording. The wording says Moabi, so that means just men, okay, not women. Rabbi Shimon Omer, al davar shelo kidmot chan alechem uvamayim, kosha lish lakadem ve'endar kosha lish shal lakadem. So again, the other one is to say, no, 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 it's the reason. The reason really only is because it was something that related only to men. They were in the wrong, not the women. Okay, and again, they don't even bring the Pasuk of Bilam because obviously that was only the men's realm. Darsh Rava. Now Rava is going to darsh and three who came from Tehilim. Tehilim is, is generally attributed to David. And it, and some of the Tehilim or many of the Tehilim are, I've been saved from some, you know, something that God saved me from, and it's thanking God for saving me. So we're now going to make reference to three Sukim that are going to all relate to this issue about this fight with Doeg Adomi that wanted to put him down and mess up, you know, mess up his whole future and how he was saved by God. So Darash Rav, my dechtiv pitach talamoserai, it's probably a pasuk 
we say all the time in Hallel, you probably never really thought about it, or you might have, but in any case, even if you if you didn't, you'll think about it now. Ana Hashem ki ani avdecha, okay? Thank you, God. I'm your I'm your servant. Ani avdecha ben amatecha, okay? I'm the servant, the son of your maid servant. Pitachta lemoserai. You undid my shackles, okay? What shackles? Amar David lefnei Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and notice it's in plural, shackles, not shackle one, but two. So he says to God, I had two issues that you untied, that you basically untied my shackles that I could have been taken down because. Okay, one was my great grandmother, Ruth, and the second one was Nama Amonit, who was married to my son Shlomo and gave birth to Rechavam, who became the king. So if he was taken down, right, I would have been my whole, right, it all would have been stopped, right, my, the, the, um, my kingdom wouldn't have continued. People would have knocked down my grandson, and that would have been the end. Darash Rabba, second Trasha. My Dachtiv Rabot Asita Hashem Elokai. You did great things. Nifla Otecha Umachshavotecha Elenu. Your wonders and your thoughts are with us. Why with us and not with me? Many of Tilim is in the singular. You saved me. You saved me. You all this. So he says Elai Lo Neemar Elai Elenu. It doesn't say to me. It says to us. It shows that the Rechavam was sitting with David, right, like in his lap. He says, for you and for me, these psukim, right, were said. Okay, right, the psukim about the Ammoni and the Moavi. So now, it's true the kingdom was split, but yes, but still, Machut Yehuda lasted for a very long time, right, even much longer than Machut Yisrael. So, see, so you're saying that it was taken away, but it wasn't taken away entirely. Um, okay, last Rasha Darish Rava my Dhtiv Az Amalti, he ne bati be Migilat Sefer Katuala. Says, and I came and I found that it was written in the Migilat in this book about me. What book is he talking about? So my Dhti um Amar David, Ani Amarti Atabati says, Now I came, but Loya Dati Shabu Migilat Sefer Katuvala. And I didn't realize it was written about me in the book, the book of the Torah. Okay, where is the book in the book of Torah is David reference? Okay, there's Pesach and Tehillim. Let's start with the second one. It says, I found David, my servant, and then I anointed him. Why is I found David, my servant, and anointed him? Like, what's this I found? Where, where does that come from? So they find, now, where did Ammon and Moab come from? Do you remember the famous story? After the destruction of Stom and Amora, it's Lot and his two daughters, and his two daughters, basically, because right, the wife died, they basically trick him into, right? They get him drunk and then they sleep with him. So now it says here, okay, so when the sun rose, take your two daughters that are here. Sounds like, right, he had some other daughters, maybe he weren't there. And they were the ones who were saved. But they take this word, and they say, oh, look, those were the daughters that gave birth to Amon Moab, which led to David becoming king. So there he says, ah, I'm referenced in Sefer Breshi. Amar Ula, so those were three drashot that we had on, right, from Psukim and Tilim. That was a Pesach and Tilim that referenced this, right? There was a connection to that. Um, and, right, this Pasuk, Azamartine, Batim, Mimiglat Sefer, Katuvalai, that's to be basically saying, oh, I realized that there was a reference to me in Sefer Breshi. Amar Ula, Amar Rabbi We're now going to move on to another topic within this topic. Bat ger amoni shera lakuna. We said amoni velo amonit, moavi velo moavi. So women are, a woman converts, she can marry anyone she wants, but a man converts from those nations, he can't marry within the Jewish people. What if he ends up with a child, okay? We're going to assume, let's just assume he married a convert right now, okay? So he marries a convert, female, you know, let's say an amonit, who can marry him, and she, they have a daughter. That daughter can marry a Kohen. That's what Rabbi Yochanan says. We'll see later, Rish Lakish disagrees with this, as does Rabbi Zakai. Okay, we're going to see some different opinions. But that's what Rabbi Yochanan says. Ula says the name of Rabbi Yochanan. So Rabbi Ba'ula says to his father, Ula, he says, I don't get who is this go according to. Okay, forget about Amon and Moab. There's a rule that Rabbi Yehuda has, which is any daughter of a male convert, remember a, a female convert can't marry a Kohen. He holds Rabbi Yehuda that the daughter of a male convert, 
Okay, so she didn't convert. She was born Jewish. She also can't marry a Kohen. So it's like a halal. So if that's the case, then for sure, uh, daughter of an, Amon, an Ammonite convert can't marry a Kohen. So can't be used talking about that. Ike Rabbi Yossi, now Rabbi Yossi has a different opinion. He argues with Rabbi Yehuda. Well, according to him, Pshita, it would be obvious, and Rabbi Yehuda wouldn't need to say this if he was talking according to Rabbi Yossi. Why? Hamal, he said, If you have a convert, a male convert who marries a female convert, so you basically end up with a couple, both converted, very common. Bitok Shera they have a daughter after they've converted, their daughter is permitted to marry a Kohen. So if that's the case, then for sure, a Gera Muni should be no different. His daughter should be able to marry a Kohen. Now, you might say, no, maybe a Gera Muni would be different. And that's exactly what the Gemara is going to say. Because a regular convert is allowed to marry anyone they want within the Jewish community. Just a Gera Muni can't. So you might think there would be a difference. But for whatever reason, the Gemara thinks right now it's obvious. Or Rabbi Barula thought it was obvious. They would be the same. So they say, maybe you want to say, again, is what I just said a second ago, which is let's distinguish between an Amoni gear and a regular gear and say, that's, that was said, what Rabbi Yossi said, those are regular converts who don't come from Amon or Moab. Okay, but but this one, the gear Amoni, since he can't marry within the community, then his daughter is also going to be disqualified for marrying a Kohen. You might have thought that. Well, why would you have thought that? So you might have learned it from a Kohen Gadol and an Almana. Okay, so a Kohen Gadol can't marry a widow. You would say it like this. I know, you can't learn it from there because, right, what do you say? That's a forbidden marriage, just like a Gera Muni can't marry within the community. They also can't marry to a Kohen Gadol, but that's, and therefore their daughter is a Halala. But she can be a Toba Avera, but they're not allowed to be with each other. Now, the Gera Muni is allowed to be with his, he can marry a Gioret Amunia, he can marry a convert. So he just can't marry Israeli, Israelite or Olivia or Kohenet. But it's not the same thing. But if you think that this is going to be, we're going to have this a few times today, but we're going to say each, each, each one has something unique about it that might say just that, nothing else. But then when you have the combination, you can disprove each other. So a halal is allowed to marry anyone they want. And a halal, someone born from a union of, let's say, a Kohen Gadol and an Almana, their child is a halal. Halal can marry anybody. But what's the problem? The halal's daughter will be a halala and won't be able to marry a Kohen. So here you see, Biato is not Babela. He can marry anyone he wants. It's permitted for him to marry. And yet, right? So he'll prove that it does go down to the next generation. The next generation becomes disqualified, even though he's done nothing wrong. So they say no, because Mala halal, halal is its own stringency. In other words, the Almanala Kohen Gadol is a stringency that they're not allowed to be together. The halal is a stringency, which is Yitzirato Babera. He was created by sin. Whereas this Geramoni converted by law, he married by law. Nothing was done illawfully. Now, it's true he can't marry an Israeli, but that's not what he did. Or at least right now, I'll kind of allude to what we're going to get to in the end. Right now, we assume he married a convert and that nothing was done wrong. So, Kohen Gadol Yochiach So now they're going to say, well, this one had Biyato Babera and that one didn't. And this one had Yitzhira Toba Beira, and that one didn't. Well, that knocks all those things out because obviously it's not, that's not the issue that caused us to say the child is, is disqualified for marrying a Kohen. Therefore, right, so that's what we say when we mean, but that's what we mean when we say Chazar Adin, we go back to the Kava Chomer. Lo re'izekiri ze, but lo re'izekiri ze. Okay, this one's not like that one, and that one's not like this one. They each have their own unique thing. Hatsana Shavesh, and we have to now get to the least common denominator. What's the least common denominator between the Kohen Gadol and the Yamana on the one hand and the Halal on the other? She'eno Birov Kahal. It's something that doesn't apply to most people in the community, right? And Almana and Kohen Gadol, it's something unique to the Kohen Gadol. The Halal is some unique character. There's not so many of them floating about. And what do we say? Their daughter is disqualified. Afkan, so therefore, let's learn to the Amoni. The Geramoni is also someone who's a Nobarov Kahal. It's a bit of a unique situation. 
Afkan she'en over Rav Kahal ubi to psula. You might have thought then that their daughter would be psula, and that's why you needed Rabbi Yochanan to come tell us, no, 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 she's shera, because even according to Rabbi Yossi, who permits the daughter of converts to marry a Kohen, wouldn't necessarily say it in this case, because you can learn it from the least common denominator between the halal and the Kohen Gadol and the Almana. To which they say, no, no, but there's again a big difference, even if you say the least common denominator, there's a least common denominator between the Kohen Gadol and the Amana and the Halal that both are connected to some sort of sin. One was created by sin and one sinned, right, by being together. So the Geramoni has no sin associated with them at all. So therefore, Right, other right, it's just forbidden for him to marry a Jewish woman, but here he didn't marry a Jewish woman, so it's not a problem, right? I mean, he married a Jewish woman, but a, a converted Jewish woman who's permitted to him. So, what do we say? Um, Dilma, so now, as I referenced, I kind of alluded to before, they're going to change the, the situation. When Rabbi Yochanan said a Gail Amuni, his daughter is permitted to come into the you know, marry even a Kohen. What we're saying is a Geramoni, not that married another convert, but a Geramoni, Dilma Vadai, uh, or you can get rid of this word Vadai according to many people, so it actually reads better this way. Dilma Ba'amoni Shanasa Ba'israel Kamarta. It must be talking about an Amoni who did something wrong and married the daughter of an Israelite. And then Rabbi Yossi wouldn't be enough. If we just have Rabbi Yossi, we might have thought that this is more a case where we're going to disqualify because he did something wrong, like the Kohen Gadol Amana, like the Chalam. But if he had actually married a convert, obviously Rabbi Yossi would have permitted that. Here it's where he did something wrong, and comes Rabbi Yochanan and says, even though he did something wrong, we're still going to allow his daughter to marry it, even a Kohen. Okay? Yeah. We're going to have to see why he comes up to, comes to this conclusion, but right now we don't know why. But we basically determined that must be what Rabbi Yochanan is talking about. And even though he did something wrong, because he wasn't allowed to marry an Israelite woman, his daughter is permitted. So that's what he suggests. He says, yes, you're right. That is in fact what Rabbi Yochanan is referring to. And we're going to prove it. Rabbi Yochanan Rabbi came from Israel. He said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, because remember, Rabbi Bar Ula asked Ula this question, and Ula said, you're right. That must be what it is. Because he said, Bat Geramoni, Bat Mitzli Sheni, Rabbi Yochanan Amark Shera. Okay, the daughter of a Geramoni and the daughter of a Mitzri Sheni who marries a Jewish woman, right? Even though they're not allowed to, Rabbi Yochanan says the child is Shera. Okay, the daughter is permitted to marry a Kohen. Rish Lakish Amar Psula. Rish Lakish disagrees and says, No way can she marry a Kohen. So Rish Lakish Amar Psula, the Yalaf Lima Kohen Gadol Bamana. Because again, he says something was done wrong, exactly what we tried to prove before. Just like a Kohen Gadol Bamana, they had a forbidden relationship. Their daughter is forbidden for marrying a Kohen. Likewise here. Rabbi Yochanan Amar Kshema. Now, why did he say Kshema? So for this, we're going to have a long section on this. First, we're going to bring one version of Rabbi Zakai and Rabbi Yochanan. Then we're going to bring a different version of a conversation with Rabbi Zakai and Rabbi Yochanan. And then we're going to go into more of this bride that Rabbi Zakai brings. The Tanei Rabbi Zakai came to Rabbi Yochanan. He brings this bride to the sex. This is about a Kohen Gadol. He has to marry a virgin woman. Okay, now what does it say? Now, if you would have written this pasuk, what would you say? He has to marry a virgin. What does it say? From within his nation. That's a weird pasuk. Wouldn't it be obvious? So what do we say? Um, so, sorry, Lahavi Giyoret Mikana Shikshera Lakuna. Me'amav must be coming to include an additional situation, an additional woman who's permitted to the Kohen Kadol. Who would that be? Even a woman who's a Giyoret Mikana. That means both her parents are converts, but she was born after they converted. Even she is permitted to a Kohen and, and presumably even to the Kohen Kadol. Okay, so that's Rabbi Zak. Amar lei, Rabbi Yochanan says to him, Ani shone, I have a different way of learning this. Amav me amav. It could have just said betula amav, even though grammatically it doesn't really work. But what he's saying is the word amav is made up of two things. The mem from amav, the nation. So that comes to include lahavi betula haba mishne amemim. Because there's two parts of the, of the, of the word, 
Like May and Amav, it's as if there's two nations. Now, what is two nations? So he's saying, I say it comes to bring, but not only can, right, not only can he marry someone who's married from, you know, the daughter of two converts, even someone from two nations. And what does this mean, two nations? So we'll get to that in a minute. But he says, In other words, you think only the child of converts. I think even more than that, even one who comes from two nations. What would the two nations be? Remember what he's trying to prove, right? So if you don't remember, we'll review it in a second. Ilema, if you want to say two nations is Amonish and Asa Amonit, because, and why would you call an Amoni and an Amoni two nations? Well, because he's forbidden and she's permitted, right? So it's almost as if they're two nations. Well, that's an if. If you say that, no, 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 that's not two nations. Umay Mishnah Amimim, right? You're going to say what? Mishnah Amimim is Charim Asurim and Kevot Mutarot, since there's a different law for different people within that nation, it's as if it's two nations. No, he doesn't accept that interpretation. Because in the end, if an, a gear amoni marries a giorit amonia, right, then e, even though theoretically maybe you could call that two nations, but it's basically no different than a gear and a giorit who marry each other and have a child. And that we know the Pasuk's adding more than that. Again, according to Rabbi Yochanan's reading. So what does he say? Ela ba'amonisha nasa ba'isar. Shnei amamim the he darshans from this Pasuk must mean a forbidden relationship of an Amoni and a Jewish woman, right? A Yisraelite. So that proves even the Kohen Gadol can marry a woman who comes from these two Amami, uh, a union, a daughter who comes from the union of two different nations, meaning even an Amoni who marries a, a Yisraelite. Okay? And that's where he gets it from, according to this version of the Trusha. And then again, he says, Right. Um, uh, okay, that's it. Ika da Amri, second version of the conversation with Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Zakai. So again, Rabbi Zakai brings in between which means Giyorit Mikana. Both her parents are converts, but we're not talking about an Amoni and a Yisraelite, because he thinks like Rish Lakish that no way, no how can the daughter of that union marry a coin because they did something wrong. But comes Rabbi Yochanan and it says, Amale, Ani Shone Amav Me Amav, Lahavi Bitulam Ishneam Amim. He now says this, he's adding on to what he said before. It's number one, a bitula that comes from Shnei is going to be permitted, which is this Jew with convert who can't marry a Jew, Amoni convert. Now there's a bunch of converts that can't marry. There's a Mitzri, a Domi, Amoni, Moabite, right? None of them can marry. Although the Mitzri and a Domi can on the third generation. So he says, so what is that? We'll see in a minute. And again, he says to Rabbi Zakai, you think it's only child of two converts, but not child of, of Yisraeli with some convert that can't marry, right? I disagree with you. So now, what does he mean? Is what he rejected in the first reading, which is an Amon, the males are permitted and the females, I'm sorry, the males are forbidden and the females are permitted. So what he's saying is a combination of two things. It has to be someone who comes from Shnei which is Jew and convert who came from a different nation like Amon. But which nation? It could be Amon, Moab, Mitzri, Edomi. No, just Amon and Moab. Only ones that are like Shnei themselves, which, right, there's a difference in the law between males and females. Okay, so that's how we get to the conclusion. In this version, in the first version, you could have said any convert who's not allowed to marry Israeli, like a Mitzri and an Edomi, right, Egyptian or Edomite. But according to this version, it's only Amon and Moab, to which the Gemara says, okay, so wait, Mitzri Shemi, Shanasa Mitzri, uh, I'm sorry, I skipped something. Ulahach um, Lishna, according to the second version, Bat Mitzri Shemi, Dikshera Lekuna Menale. They say, wait, but the daughter of a Mitzri Shani, how do we know that she can marry a Kohen? Now, remember, Mitzri and Edomi, there was a Machloket in the Mishnah. Does it apply to males and females? But the Tanakama, the main opinion says it applies to males and females. And they can only marry the third generation, can already marry Jews. So how do we know that a third generation can actually marry um, a Kohen even? Okay, so, which they assume, yes, she can. Israel. If you say we're going to learn because if the Amonish and Asaba Israel, also the Mitzri, obviously, no, because Mala Amonish and Asaba Israel, Shekemi Kevot Mutarot, 
Remember, if the drasha is only referring to Amoni, then it wouldn't teach us anything about the daughter of a mitzri. So we'd have to learn it some other way. So let's say we'll learn it from a kavachomer. The Amoni is more strict because, right, because they can't ever marry. However, they're more lenient because the Nikkei are permitted. So that's why we permit their daughter to marry Kohn. But they say, ah, well, on the other hand, Mitzri Sheni Shen, Asa Mitzri Shnei Yochiach. Ma'la Mitzri Sheni Shen, right now, second generation Mitzri marries a second generation Mitzri. Their kids can actually marry into the community, no problem. So, Shekein Ein Biatova Avera, right? Now, each one has something unique, right? So, the, the, the leniency of the Ammonite, of the Ammonite is that the women are permitted. The leniency of the Mitzri the third generation can marry. So, Ammonish and Asa by Israel Yochiach, the Chazar Adin, and we're going to say, ah, the, since the Ammonish and Asa by Israel is going to be permitted, then, because again, each one knocks out the other, and we can learn from there that there where there was something wrong with the Mitzri, there wasn't even anything wrong, therefore it's going to prove the Chazar Adin, and again, we're going to say from the common, the least common denominator, we can learn from there to the Mitzri Shani. Even though the Drasha is only about an Ammoni, you can actually derive from there that something that's similar to it, which is the Mitzri, the daughter of a Mitzri Shani can marry, and who marries the Israel, their daughter can marry a Kol. Amar of Yosef, now going back to our Drasha, Okay, he says, listen, the, I heard from Rav Yudah that he had some drasha, amav me, amav, and I never knew what it was. Now I know that this is the drasha of Rabbi Yochanan. Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda now comes and explains Rabbi Zakk. When Rabbi Zakk came in front of Rabbi Yochanan, this is what he said. Isha Monik Shera. Okay, a woman, an Amoni woman is permitted to marry. Benam me Amoni Pasu. Her son, if she has a son from an Amoni father, convert, right? It's, he's disqualified. We're going to go through all these cases in a minute, okay? Her daughter from an Amoni is permitted. In which case is this? Okay, this is only if it, they were both converted, then the daughter would be Ksheha. But if it's a daughter from an Amoni, it's going to be Psula. And we don't yet know what this means. We're going to see. The reaction of Rabbi, Yehuda, Rabbi Yochanan had to this writer of Rabbi Zakai was to say, Amrle Puktana Livra. Rabbi Yochanan is famous for saying this Puktana Livra, go teach that Mishnah outside. There's no place for this, uh, this bright outside, no place for this bright in my baby trash. You're totally wrong. So, my da Amr, let's go through each one. You said Isha Amonik Shera, that's very simple. Amoni Vila Amoni. So, the women are obviously okay. Biname Amoni Pasul da Amoni. Okay, the son of an Amoni convert, we know it keeps going down generations. So it's obviously Pasuk. Now, the daughter of an Amoni is permitted for what? Well, Lamat, obviously she can love Obakal because right? if her mother, who actually converted from Ammonite religion, is permitted, of course the daughter is going to be permitted. So you don't even need to tell us that. Ella Lakuna must be Lakuna. She must be permitted Lakuna, the daughter of an Ammonite convert. Now, what this line about So what is this bitame amoni, this psula? If it's an amoni and an amoni that both converted, well, we already know that their child is permitted because that's the child of two converts can marry a coin. And here it says psula. So it must be amoni shenasa ba Israel. It must be the exact case that Rabbi Zakkai and Rabbi Yochanan disagree about. And that's why Rabbi Yochanan said, Puktani Levra, because the daughter of an Ammoni who married a Jewish woman is actually permitted to marry a Kohen. Okay. And that's, so that was basically just a review of what we saw before. Okay. Yes, we saw Rabbi Yochanan say, Puktani Levra, thank you, Adina, and Erevin 9. And he says it, I think of all the people, he's the person most quoted saying Puktani Levra. Okay. I always like it because it's very passionate. You know, you have no place. This has no place in the statement, Josh, right? Teach it outside, which has double connotation. Also, teach it outside. Maybe if somebody holds that way, but not here, not in my bait midrash. Okay, Mitzri the Edomi and Amasuri. Now we have to go back to the mission and understand this line. So Rabbi Shimon and the rabbis disagreed about a Mitzri and Edomi female. Okay, a convert who is a Mitzri and an Edomit says, right, she can she marry in? Is it just Amoni below Ma'avi? Or is it also Mitzri below Mitzri? So Rabbi Shimon says, Kavachomer, obviously, Mitzri and Edomi is already lenient because it's only third, gen third generation already can marry, and Amoni and Amoni never. So, and yet the females are permitted, so the females must be permitted here, to which the rabbi said, if 
You just made up that cup of chomer, we can knock it out. If you have a tradition, then we'll accept it. It's similar to the whole thing about the tradition before about the Amoni Velo Amoni. So my tshuva, what is the reaction that they could have said? Right? What could they have said against him? So Amar Bar Chana Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Mishum deika lemeimar arayot yochichu. Shelo asar ben ela ad shlosha adorot echad zchri vechad nekevot. They could have said just because something's more lenient and it only goes up to three generations doesn't mean that it's permitted to the females because arayot forbidden relations are only forbidden for three generations. Right? And according to the Torah, this goes back to the very first Mishnah of our Masachet. Bito and bat bito, right? A man to his daughter and his granddaughter. Great granddaughter is only Durabana. The Torah doesn't say that. So our Yoda permitted third generation. And yet, males and females are part of the prohibition. Well, you can knock that out. Okay, that's how they could knock out Rabbi Shema. But Rabbi Shema could have a retort to that. Mala Rayot, you can't karate. No, our Yoda much more strict because they're karate. This mystery is only a, a, a bitol mitzvah ase. So it's not even a lotus. So mamzer yochiach, which is not karet, and yet mamzer is men and women as well. Yeah, but mamzer has another shun, you see that it's forever forbidden. It doesn't end after two generations. So arayot yochichu. Again, we're going to go back to the same thing. We keep going back to the least common denominator, chazar adin, lo lo Each one has something unique, right? The arayot only goes three generations. The mamzer is only yisur lav. What's the least common denominator? They're both forbidden and they apply to men and women. So we can say the same thing for the mystery and the Yadomi. So they say, no. Right, so first they're going to say, That's what the rabbis could say against Rabbi Shema. Comes the retort. Now a mom's there is not forbidden curry for him to marry someone. But how did a mom's there get created? Remember, there's a whole big machloket, but the main opinion is only from chayve kritut. So arayo and mamzerim both have something to do with kari, whereas the mitzri and adomi have nothing to do with kari. So what can the rabbis say? Then let's try something else. That obviously, that whole line of thinking didn't work because Rabbi Shimon could knock it out. So we're still trying to figure out how the rabbis could knock out the kavachoma that Rabbi Shimon made about the mitzri and adomi since it's more lenient than amona moav, and yet amona moav is permitted to women. So this should be permitted to women as well. You can learn it from a halal that comes from a chayve ase. What's that? A woman who is a bitula, supposed to marry a kohen, right? Kohen gadol can only marry a bitula. That means he can't marry someone who's already had relations with someone. He never says that in the Torah. So that's called, right? It only says it's a positive formulation. So there's no negative commandment, okay? So now, and yet, right? It's forbidden to men and women, right? So, right, a halal is, could be a halal male or it could be a halal female. And Kerab Lezer ben Yaakov, who holds that, okay, there's a debate. If a Kohen Gadol marries a woman who's already had relations with someone, she's not a virgin, then there's a debate whether the child's a halal or not. So it would have to be like Rabbi Lezer ben Yaakov, who holds the child's a halal. Whereas people who disagree with him and don't hold that, well, then obviously you can't learn from here because then nothing goes down, right? It's, there's, there's no law that's applicable. So my low key, now when Rabbi Shima responds to the rabbis in the Mishnah, he says, low key, I have a Masoret. No, but I have a Masoret. That means you think I don't have a Masoret. No, no, almost like, no, I disagree with you. And I have a Masoret. So what is this? Hachi Kami. This is what he really says. Ladidi lo severely to Rabbi Lezer Yaakov. So first of all, I disagree with you because I don't hold like Rabbi Lezer Yaakov. I think there is no Chalaf from Chai in which case your whole argument falls down. But I'll give you the deed to Sphere Luke or Lesser Ben Yaakov, Halachani Omer, but for you, do hold by him. Well, now I'll tell you I have a tradition and then you can't knock me out anyway. Amar, um, Tanya, now we have a bright tip about this. Amar, Lem Rabbi Shimon, Halachani Omer, the Od Mikamasayan. Not only do I have a, a tradition, but I have a Pasuk to prove it because it says by the Mitzri, Banim Asher Yuvaldu Lahem Dorsh the Shi Yavo Hena. So what does that mean, right? Uh, sorry, Yavo Lahem Bekal Hashem. So what does that mean? George, it says, Banim, sons can marry. The third generation sons are allowed to marry. Why aren't daughters mentioned there? Because daughters already can marry from the beginning. That's my proof in the text for my tradition. Tanu Rabbanam, Banim below Bano, Tivrei Rabbi Shim. And that's his drasha that we just saw. Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda knocks this out and says, Harei Omer, Banim Asher Yivaldu Lahem Dorsh Lishi, HaKatuf Tila Ambeleida. It's true it doesn't say Bano, but it says sons who are born. Who are the people who give birth? The women. So there's obviously reference to the women in that pasuk. 
That means here come the rabbis to say, I disagree with your Joshua. Our Joshua would say women are included as well. Okay, now we're going to stop here and Rabbi Yochanan is going to say something which is going to continue to the next page, which is, Okay, um, uh, sorry, Yilav Damar Rabbi Yehuda, Ketuv Tla Am Beleida, if Rabbi Yehuda hadn't said this, Lo Matzaya Davar Aglav Bebeit Midrash, he would have had no hands and feet in the Beit Midrash, meaning he had nothing to rely on because of something else Rabbi Yehuda says, which would seem to go against this, and we'll see this tomorrow, or which would seem to lead us in a different direction. But now that he says this, it becomes clear. Okay, that's it for today. Have a great day, everyone.